Let's bring in Alexis Rosenberg. She's a uh, she's a, an attorney in Sarasota, Florida, and Kelly Hyman. She's been with us all morning. She's in West Palm Beach, Florida. Um, Alexis, welcome. Good morning to you. As we get ready for day ten of uh, this trial, yesterday we heard a lot of testimony, and significantly, Dr. Shannon Curry got up and basically diagnosed Amber Heard for the entire world to hear. Um, your thoughts overall: how this is going for Johnny Depp, for Amber Heard, and specifically how that testimony yesterday may have moved the ball. I think it's going fairly well for Johnny Depp. I mean, the psychologist was supporting and explaining much of a man of uh, Heard's behaviors. It supported the diagnosis that she uh, had provided. I mean, there was some question, obviously, on Cross, which is their job to go in and discredit her with the fact that she had had drinks with Depp, the fact that there was some disclosures prior to her even evaluating and making her diagnosis that, uh, you know, Ms. Heard had borderline uh, personality disorder. But it really did support her actions once we heard the different recordings and what she was doing on those recordings. Kelly, set the table for today. Um, it seems like this would be a good spot to stop if you're the Depp team. We are going to have a few more witnesses, specifically a couple more of these officers from Los Angeles that that responded to this domestic violence call, and it turned out that they didn't get any cooperation with the people inside the apartment, including Amber Heard. Um, you're, what do they need to still do, or have they done enough, do you believe, uh, to get a, a favorable verdict? I, I think the team for Johnny Depp has done a great job representing him and advocating for him. But I think the officers are key because they're, when people see them on the jury, they know they're unbiased. They don't have a fight in the game. So the fact that they were there and they helped substantiate Johnny's assertion that he wasn't the aggressor, that this is not true, that he was not a wife beater, that he didn't harm him. And I think the officers do a great job um, of being there and, and telling what happened and they believe believe based on what they saw that she wasn't physically abused and they tell a really good story for Johnny and, and help substantiate his claim. But I think it'd also be helpful to show how much um, economic harm he's had um, because of this, have another person testify mm -hmm. to it of talking about how it's really ruined his career and will continue to ruin his career because of the harm of all this that he's been through. Alexis, the idea that a, an officer shows up when a domestic violence call has been made can go two ways. Uh, either nothing really happened and, and the person that called is having the uh, old feeling for calling in the first place, or something did happen and the feeling, um, and the victim is having that same uh, old feeling because they don't want to put their aggressor into a rage. Um, there's a lot of reasons why you don't cooperate in a domestic violence situation with police. Having more of these officers testify, um, do you think we'll get some clarification even more so uh, um, because we're going to get some redundancy, but maybe, maybe some more clarification as well? I, I agree with you. There's many reasons that victims of domestic violence might not cooperate. However, in this case, it seems that the officer that, as stated before, is unbiased and has come into the situation with the job to basically evaluate this and determine whether someone is in danger and what exactly is going on. And the initial testimony that we've heard, there was no, that she's not seeing that anybody has been harmed physically. There's no marks on Ms. Heard, and you know, obviously she's upset. But under her, with her experience and expertise, this officer did not perceive this to be a situation where that she needed medical care or a situation where she needed to continue with that investigation. Now, obviously, we'll have to see what the other officers testify to, but I would assume that it's going to be similar and go along the same lines. Otherwise, one of the other officers probably probably would have either put in a report or something of that nature that they uh, viewed this a different as a different situation. You see everybody standing, the jury is in. Let's go back in live, day 10, starting now. Alexis Rosenberg is with us. She's in Sarasota, Florida. She's a, um, she's got federal trial experience and um, she's been watching along with us. 
Alexis, did you notice at the end when attorney Brenda Hoff was questioning this officer, the last few questions, she said, are you aware that if, you know, a, a, an officer that does not complete their duties can be criminally charged? At that point, Johnny Depp looked at his attorney and shook his head back and forth. What was your take on trying to press this officer, and we saw it yesterday with the first officer, with question after question after it was pretty clear they went there, didn't get much cooperation, surveyed the place, and left? I, I mean, she was trying to say that he wasn't doing his job. I think that he was very strong on the stand. He went through and he said that he was following procedure. I don't think it was a good strategy on her point because then she got him to repeatedly say that he didn't see marks and he didn't see any evidence of a crime. Do you think we'll get anything from the third officer that's uh, up next? And, and if not, what's the point at this point? The the lopping on from Depp's team. They want to reiterate, I guess, that there were no marks. I think from Depp's perspective it, that we're not, we're going to hear consistently the same thing. But I think to add that on a third person and put that before a jury, there were no marks, there was no evidence of a crime, and that they did an investigation is a smart strategy. And the overall feeling when you get and you listen to these officers, the officers uh, come across as hardworking people that were called to um, a residence. And when they got there, they were met by people that the jury now knows, and we know by watching it, that it's Amber Heard and her, her clique there. Um, and it sounds like they're rude to them and they're, they're not being cooperative and it is like pulling teeth and it's a difficult scenario and mm -hmm. domestic issues um, they bring on odd behaviors because of fear and other uh, things that are brought in but in this case do you think that overall that this is in because that's what Depp's team thinks is this hurting Amber Heard this um, basically over a, a day and a half of revisiting this incident in 2016 I think it is hurting. I think it is hurting her because the bottom line is we're getting testimony again and again from multiple people that the jury's hearing that there was no evidence that she had any marks. There was no evidence of a crime. There was not broken glass. None of that existed. We just had a very upset individual that was there with friends who weren't cooperating with the police. Yeah. Let's talk about the case overall. Um, we're nearing the end. We're anticipating that Johnny Depp's team will wrap its case in chief either tomorrow, the court is dark Friday, or maybe it'll bleed into Monday. Have they done enough in your estimation uh, to get a favorable outcome here? I mean, it seems by public opinion, they definitely have. I mean, the public is supporting Johnny Depp. They have definitely put on some question about the fact her mental stability with the testimony from the psychologist and her behavior seems to support that. And now we have police officers saying that there was no evidence of what she is now alleging happened. In a criminal trial or in a civil trial where the people really are in need of the money, if you said public opinion, we'd say, well, who cares about that? This might be different. That might be the actual motivation for this trial in the first place. Um, Johnny Depp trying to change public opinion um, about his situation and the label that was put on him as a a wife beater, a domestic abuser. We understand the jury is not back in the courtroom. The judge just walked onto the bench. The parties are now huddling around for a sidebar before we get into the next one. Let's get a break in here, and when we come back, we'll go back in live for more testimony. It's day 10. Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard on Court TV. Stay with us. There we go. Yes, sir. Calling for the jury. Alexis Rosenberg is watching along with us. Um, and when we... Uh, Went to break, Alexis. We were talking about the overall um, how Johnny Depp is doing, how Amber Heard's doing. Let's move forward to next week. That's when we expect Amber Heard to take the stand. Can you imagine the pressure that she is going to be under after the table has been set about Johnny Depp's allegations and then Dr. Shannon Curry's assessment that she is suffering from borderline personality disorder?
your thoughts on what's at stake next week when Amber takes the stand. Well, I'm sure she's chomping at the bit, even though it's very stressful to be on the stand and, and giving testimony or being cross-examined. But she's been just writing those notes, and I feel that she's just ready to get up there. So it'll be interesting, her perspective, for sure, and I'm sure it's going to be exactly the opposite of Johnny Depp's. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's go back in.